Tea Tuesday update. What the heck is this? This is the first status report of the T2 Tile project, which is what I've been working on uh, a lot uh, for the last couple of years anyway, and in a more general sense for a decade or more that uh, it's gotten fairly far down the road, um, but there's still a lot left to do. And it really, you know, I'm human. I watch YouTube videos. I like to watch, you know, maker videos. I think the first guy I ran into was Peter Shreepal. You know, he's great. And that led me to Colin Furs. <laughs> you know, this guy can build anything. You know, you sit back, oh, yeah, sure, I could do that. You know, it's crazy, the stuff that these people can do. I'm not a hardware person. I'm a computer scientist, more of a software person. But nonetheless, I, too, am uh, building this thing. I'm working on this project. I'm trying to build this new kind of computer architecture that's very different than what we're, the way we're computing now. I think it's important. And so both as a forcing function to get me to make regular progress, as well as for advocacy, as well as to help spread the word about what the project is and what its goals are and, and how progress it's making. It seems like it's really be a good idea to have regular reports. And, you know, for me, the things like, you know, Martin from Winter Gatan with the Marble Machine X project, you know, I watch that every week and I see his successes and his setbacks and his like, oh, that's really cool, or I learned something, or I don't think that's going to work, oh, it did work, whatever. But it really helps for people to get involved, for people to get engaged, and to sort of gradually learn what the issues are about the particular engineering task that you're trying to accomplish. And, the, you know, as Martin's always saying, you know, it's not about the machine, it's about the music. I'm not a musician, but what I'm going for is a new way to compute that'll be better, both more powerful and safer, better for society. So this is my first weekly report. That is truly terrifying. <laughs> the uh, whoops. Uh, um, the uh, plan, the shape of it is uh, 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 every week, every Tuesday, T Tuesday, uh, uh, at noon Mountain Time. Uh, that's my goal to get the next uh, status report out. A uh, uh, little intro of some sort, uh, recap what happened, what actually happened in, in the past week. Uh, put myself on the record to make some predictions, some wishes, some goals for the coming week. And then if in fact anybody actually sort of joins in and wants to follow along uh, uh, and has any uh, questions or, you know, sort of, you know, in the mailbag or whatever, to just try to fill in stuff that was missing from before. I mean, from one point of view, it would have been better to start this uh you know, weekly updates two years ago. But on the other hand, you know, every movie made in the last 30 years, right, they always come in right before the end, right before where it gets exciting, and then they do flashbacks for all the rest. So that's kind of where we are. A ton of decisions have already been made. I've built prototype hardware, prototype tiles. The goal is, can we actually get the hardware finalized, get it manufactured in quantity, dozens, hundred or so, and start using it and go for, you know, incredible kick-ass demonstrations of a different way to compute. So we'll see. So the Q&A will uh, perhaps be flashbacks to why the decisions are made the way they were, what the goal is. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, um, all right. Uh, uh, so let me take let's see let's try to take like three or four minutes tops to try to just scope out the picture once over lightly so the t2 tile project is about a different way to compute still using digital hardware using all of the manufacturing and sort of low level and gate chips all of that stuff that we're already extremely good at being able to design and manufacture but to put a completely different architecture on it and the important change is giving up on this idea of hardware determinism like that so you know, the software hardware contract that was made way back when in the beginnings in the 1940s was hardware is going to take the nasty noisy analog physical world and clean it all up and provide pure bits pure mathematical reliable bits that 
everything step by step, every input guaranteed the same output. Same program, same input, guaranteed to get the same output. It doesn't matter how long it takes the program to run or how much memory the program takes up. As long as it fits in the machine, the answer has to be the same at the end. That is hardware determinism. And, you know, it's worth understanding that almost nothing in reality works that way. You ask, you know, someone to do something and they say, oh yeah, sure, I'll do it, and they don't do it. Or they do it and they do it wrong. The world is full of that stuff. In fact, the idea of software being able to just assume that it can write something in, on step one of a program and it can read it back again on step 100 billion of the program and it'll still be exactly the same thing is remarkable. And that's part and parcel of the power of traditional digital computing. The problem is it's too amazing. It doesn't actually scale up. And the, we're all in this trap, everybody who's a computer person anyway, uh, almost everybody who's in the computer person is in this trap of, of, of you know making excuses and saying, oh, yes, it is, yes, it is. But in, in fact, it really isn't. And, and <laughs> I've had lots of arguments with people about it, lots of discussions, because I'm coming out of that same tradition. I'm coming out of hardware. Reliability is a hardware problem. Software's focus is on correctness and efficiency, but we have to get beyond that if we're going to get to the better, more powerful, and safer world of computing. So hardware determinism doesn't scale and it isn't safe. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the reasons for that right now, but the alternative is, is you know, you'd say, okay, well, I'll make a computer that allows a little bit of errors and I'll build some sort of software redundancy and it like that. Well, you can do that. And there are people who've done it. And there's a fields full of papers, research papers <clears throat> that are doing that kind of thing. Sort of little piecemeal step away from <clears throat> hardware determinism and tolerate a little bit of failure or even deliberately give up on a certain amount of accuracy to try to do something faster or use less energy that sort of thing what i say we need to do with the heart and soul of the t2 tile project is we need a different assumption to take as our core assumption instead of hardware determinism rather than staying right where we've been and taking little teeny steps away we need to say what should we be heading for and that will allow us to reinvent all of the stuff that we've just sort of left the way it is on behalf of hardware determinism. And what I came up with was this idea of indefinite scalability. We should build a computer. We should build a computer architecture that will scale indefinitely. You can add more and add more. You use it before you build it. There's no notion of a sort of global boot time to turn on the whole machine because it's too big. The thing is running, you're, add, you're using, adding more stuff to it. Some is always failing. If you can begin with an architecture that is indefinitely scalable, then that will force a whole bunch of issues that we sweep under the table about software taking care of robustness as well as efficiency and correctness and so on. And what I say is, and I'm pretty well convinced of this at this point, is that uh, when you embrace indefinite scalability, so we build a computer architecture that can go from here to Pluto if we want, and we'll be using it when, you know, it's barely gotten past Jupiter or whatever, uh, um, the way software is going to work, the way, computer, the way computations are going to work in this indefinite scalable hardware is going to look much more like living systems. They're going to move to get out of the way. They're going to protect themselves. They're going to heal. They're going to reproduce for the same reasons that living systems do, to preserve themselves, to get their jobs done, to occupy available resources. So I'm suggesting <laughs> that we should put aside uh, uh, virtually all of our intuitions, all of the stuff that we lean on when we do traditional programming, software engineering, and so forth, and do a whole new start. Why would anybody do that? As Carl Sagan said, Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. So the project is, well, heck, let's come up with the extraordinary evidence. Uh, uh, let's just build it. 
The way you can build a definitely scalable machine is by making an individual little tile of computing that can plug together with more and more of its own kind. And there's no absolute address, there's no serial number, there's nothing unique about them. They're like grains of sand that you can pack together and make a bigger and bigger and bigger sheet of these things. And, you know, in the future, we can hope that it'll all be optimized and these individual tiles will be microscopic. And, you know, you might be able to repair your computer by just sort of scooping stuff out of a different machine and packing it into the thing that you need. Who knows? But for now, for a demo, for research to show the idea, say, we'll just take some, some cheap Linux board, something like a Raspberry Pi. Now, in the end, we've picked a board, and it's not the Raspberry Pi, but we'll get to it. Uh, um, build a custom circuit board to mount the thing on that sort of remaps the I.O. pins in a way so that the, the tile, this individual little computing thing, can connect to copies of itself, just to the nearest neighbors, you know, east and west and so forth. Maybe stick on some kind of little display so we can see what's going on. Do that. Build it. Make a hundred of them. Something like that. And actually just show how it works. Let's make it work. That's the project. And, you know, so this status report, the T2 tile project, a lot of it is going to be about hardware because that's where we're currently at in the project. But the hardware itself is just a step in a larger program. The point is to build, you know, a tabletop full of a hundred of these tiles or more and actually start being able to use that as a computational resource to build a new kind of software that follows this living computation thing. That's the plan. All right, taking too much time. Uh, uh, so where are we? What's the status report? Uh, um, you know, I've been working on this on and off for years. In the last week, what I spent most of the time doing was actually working on a, a written report uh, uh, for a guy that's helping me out. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll make it public, who knows, uh, going forward. Uh, but just trying to sort of summarize where we all were. I also <coughs> hacked a bunch on the software that I'm using for these slides. It's got a lot of other capabilities that I'm working on as well. Why do we need to do that for the T2 tile project? Well, it's not exactly clear how much we do, but <sighs> it's fun. Uh, um, and it's also true that I have discovered that in all the years <coughs> of working on this kind of living computation, best effort, all of this stuff, is that it actually affects my software engineering design. It affects the way I implement normal stuff. Uh, um, and it may turn out to be the case that having uh, the Viz system built up may end up being little useful examples. It's all very much close to the, the traditional approach. It's one of those little bitty steps away, but it might be evocative. And in the last week, I've been convincing myself I really have to make these status reports, or I really have to make the first one and put it up there. Coming up. Uh, uh, in, uh, for next week, what I would like to have is an actual little uh, intro video. You know, I talked for, what, four or five minutes about the meaning of the project. I'd like to boil that down to one frickin' sentence uh, um, and have some kind of little video bumper that we can put on at the beginning. In general, as I'm rotating away from taking care of other stuff and focusing on the visualization and so forth, to get back to focusing on the T2 itself, I uh, just got to get, you know, I got to get Kai going again, the hardware stuff, just to refresh my T2 brain. Also, we have a new version of the programming language Ulam coming out that has uh, modifications to the simulator to make it work better with these tiles. It's time to get Ulam 4 out of there. The original intent was to get Ulam 4 out in August. That didn't happen. Uh, um, and also, make myself be here again. Uh, um, so, Q and A. Well, we're taking we've already taken up 15 minutes, so we'll leave Q and A for another time. If if anybody does want to come along, wants to you know get in on the ground floor, certainly one thing that would help me is <clears throat> what ideas you know all of this area. You know, there's living there's living computation, indefinite scalability, best effort, robust first. All of these different ideas that for me they all lead to the same place. They're views of you know the blind man and the elephant. 
but for different people with different backgrounds, different ones can be helpful. And, you know, I can't tell. People say, oh, summarize it. I say, well, I can't summarize it unless I know what you know. So I'm really much more of a counterpuncher. If people are willing to ask questions, I would love to answer them. <sighs> How do I feel about doing this? That's the question I'm asking myself to, <laughs> to get us started. Uh, uh, well, you know, I feel terrified uh, and because, you know, right. Fundamentally, if you keep it a secret, if you're doing it just by yourself, then it's kind of like CPU and RAM. It's kind of like serial computing. You can, you know, you can have your desktop covered with half constructed pieces of project as long as you want, as long as nobody else, uh, uh needs that space. And you can work on it whenever you work on it. Just like in serial determinism, the computer goes however fast it goes, and you have to wait until it gets to the end. But the instant you become event-driven, the instant you start having I.O. to the environment where there are other active entities, now it's no longer serial determinism. Now there are other agents out there, other active components that have their own time constants uh, and, you know, you need to do it or you're going to lose it and so forth. So, you know, that that's the good and the bad about committing to a weekly, or not weekly, you know, at, at my age, a week feels like, oh, it's another week. I really wanted to do sort of a monthly report, but I'm saying weekly. We'll see. So I'm terrified because really, uh, um, you know, a week is going to be here before I know it, really. But on the other hand, I need to do it. <clears throat> Why do I need to do it? Because, of course, it's emblematic of the process I'm saying, that we need dynamic, sort of democracy, interactive computing, rather than I am in charge of everything, everybody wait until I'm ready, and then we'll done. So, here we are. The next update will be out. Tuesday, August, uh, Tuesday, October 16th at noon Mountain Time. I welcome you, you to join me if you want, uh, uh, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching.